morning. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. We're going to ask you to stand all over the house this morning. I know it's Christmas Eve, but let's begin singing the old Christmas This morning, help me this morning take up our morning tithes and offerings. <laughs> this morning, we're going to remain standing for prayer, and immediately following that, we'll bring our offerings into the Lord and then uh, meet and greet one another in the Lord on this Christmas Sunday. Let's pray together. Eternal Father, Lord, we just love you and we thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, we pray, God, today that every note that is played, song that is sung, message given, scripture read, would be for the upbuilding of the kingdom. And God, Lord, as we are here on Christmas, Eve Sunday, God, to celebrate, God, the reason why you came. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would celebrate today not only with lifted hands and songs in our heart, but, Lord, it's giving back to you because you gave us all you have, which was your precious son. Lord, I pray for the gift, bless the gift and the giver, bless of those that have the give and those that may not. If there's someone here today that can't give for whatever reason, I pray you would bless them until sometime they can. Father, we will give you all the praise and the glory and the honor that's to your name. People of God together said amen. 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 Will you come at this time? God bless you.
temple to give you glory, Lord. Lift you, Lord. those that are reading scripture and prayer uh, to make their way at this time. Me following that, and Sister Sherry will be coming to lead our special song today. In keeping with the Christmas theme, I was uh, studying last night. I always review my Sunday school lesson on Saturday. And Opened my Bible up to Luke because I was reading about it and said, you know what? Not often do we talk about when Elizabeth and Mary met. So I want to read you this morning Mary's joyful song, which is in Luke 1, starting in verse 46. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath holpened or helpened his servant Israel in, repentance of his mercy, in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And then it said Mary abode with her, Elizabeth, about three months and returned to her own house. And I told my Sunday school class this morning that things could be a lot different. Mary and Joseph both obeyed. There's a lot of obedience that goes into this, and we are given choices by God. And they chose to obey. So we need to sit and worship God Through his son, Jesus, who is our Savior, who came here by choice to be our Savior. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Kind Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise your holy name for this opportunity to come before you, Lord, in this season. Lord, help people to remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Lord, that he came down here for us to give himself up. Lord, that his blood would cover our sins. We thank you for all of that, Lord. We thank you for everything you have done. We thank you for those that need help this Saturday season, pray that you will continue to abide with them and keep them. For those that are sick today, I pray that you will be by their bedside and touch them and lift them up and strengthen them. For those that are traveling, provide traveling mercies and angels round about them. For those that have to work, Lord, I pray you will be with them and strengthen them and let them be worthy of their hire. Lord, I pray you will continue to abide with us and help us to do all you would have us to do in the service today. We ask all this in Jesus' holy precious name. Amen.
Let's stand all over the house this morning. Continue in that spirit of worship. What a beautiful song of reminder today. Let's, let's continue to sing by declaring that Jesus, he was a lowly baby, he's meek and mild, but he's still King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's worship together. Yeah. 
just the voices it was silent night holy night all is calm all is bright round yon virgin Father, Lord, we love you today, Lord, and we glorify your name. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would inhabit the praises of your people. God, this is a time of celebration. This is a time to commemorate that which you have done, the sending of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray today, God, that every message that is to be spoken, every song that is sung, every scripture that has been read has been for the upbuilding and the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would be with us today. As we study your word, you continue to guide us, lead us safely on. We pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the people of God together said amen. 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 You may be seated if you can briefly. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to the book of Luke chapter, or excuse me, the book of Matthew, I'm sorry, the book of Matthew <laughs> chapter number two, and I'll have you stand just momentarily. Let me just quickly make a couple of housekeeping items to you today so that you are aware of uh, what's going on. There will not be a PM service tonight. Uh, we 
normally do a Christmas Eve evening candlelight communion service, but we will tag candlelight communion here momentarily at the end of this message. We will tag that at the end of today's uh, service before we are dismissed. So no PM service tonight. There will be no midweek in between uh, the services today and next week. Next Sunday, we'll have regular scheduled like we normally do, 10 o'clock Sunday school, 11 o'clock worship, but no PM next week as some folks will still be trying to get back and forth from the holiday, and then we'll get back on a routine. Please don't forget, though, on January the 7th, that is a Sunday night, uh, in uh, the first Sunday night in January, January the 7th, uh, we will be having um, uh, Dr. Tim Hill, which is the General Overseer of the Church of God, be in service with us. He is coming uh, through the area, and so he'll be coming on that Sunday night. Now, if you've ever been anywhere with us with CLM or anything like that, you know how busy it gets and how packed it is. I will tell you, uh, I uh, just based on phone conversations and people that I talk to, I have a suspicion we are going to be at max capacity if not having to have overflow. So if you want to sit in the main auditorium and be able to be live rather than watching it online somewhere in a building, in one of our buildings, you will want to come early. If you come at 545, you're going to be in trouble. We've got buses coming in uh, from other parts of the area. We've got other churches in this area who have... Uh, expressed interest who we've not heard of ever before but have heard of Dr. Hill before and they've called and said is this open to anybody and I said sure so there's people coming everywhere um, and so that's great uh, <clears throat> one publicity for our church but two um, seats are limited uh, we will have, we'll have an call with a uh, monitor and um, sound projection as well as we'll have it set up in the children's ministry building as a secondary uh, site. But just letting you know, there's going to be a lot of people in this house on January 7th. So I told somebody the other day, I said, if you had to pick a service to come to on January 7th, if you were having a debate, well, Pastor, I can only come to one, don't come to the morning service, come to the night service. I already know half the time some folks don't come hear me anyway, but I'd really like for us to put our best foot forward for the general overseer as much as possible. Um, and then you can come back any other time and hear me. I'm here every week, same channel. He's here one night. So make sure that you mark that on your calendars. It's going to be an exciting time coming. Um, and uh, lots of folks have wanted that happen, but uh, we're honored to have him come with us. Punctual on time today, so I want to jump right into the message. We've been in a been with me. For the last few weeks, we've been on a series, and we will finish the series today called A Hallmark Christmas. Um, in fact, my wife and I think this year total, um, that's four more than I've ever watched in my life. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm becoming a Hallmarkian, I guess you would call it, movie connoisseur. Still don't like any of them, but I tolerate them now. So we're making progress. I still drink out of my Grinch hot chocolate mug. Uh, to get through it, but uh, we're going to finish today with a festive message talking about the arrival of Christ and, and of his arrival. So I'm going to ask you to stand all over the house. We're going to read uh, out of Luke's uh, account uh, here this morning uh, and, and jump right into uh, the message, if you will. I'm sorry, I think the wrong verses in here. The verses not Matthew for some reason. I don't see them transferred over. If you go to the book of Matthew chapter 2, and we're going to start in verse 1 there for me. Book of Matthew chapter number 2 verse 1. I'm not sure why it didn't transfer all the way over uh, from my iPad. Let's read together verse 2, chapter 2 of Matthew verse 1. Now after this, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah. In the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem. Verse 2 saying, where is he? who is born king of the Jews, for we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. In verse 3, when Herod heard this, he was troubled at all this noise, sayings that he had heard, and all of Jerusalem with him. Verse 4, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and the people together, he inquired of them, where is this Christ who was to be born? Let's drop down to verse number 9. And when they heard the king, these wise men, they departed and behold the star which they had seen in the east went before them until it came and stood above where the young child was. Notice Jesus is not a baby anymore. 
He's gotten a little bit bigger since the last time we talked to him. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. If you were with us on Wednesday night, we were talking about you can find joy in all situations. The Bible says when they saw the star, they just weren't happy about it. They rejoiced with an exceedingly great joy. What would it be like if we came to church every Sunday with the anticipation of the star of Bethlehem to shine bright in our lives? And we came to church with exceedingly great joy when we walked into the house. Some of us look like we ate Sour Patch Kids before we came to church. But we're supposed to come with exceedingly great joy. Notice verse 11. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and they worshipped him. And they opened up their treasures and presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another Way. Today I want to talk to you on this idea of the crown prince of Christmas. The crown prince of Christmas. I'm going to ask Brother Randy if he would pray over the reading of God's word this morning at this time. Amen. If you know anything, you may be seated. If you know anything about Hallmark movies, we've been continuing on this series. We're on week four. But in 2022, there came a great American classic. It came off the Great American Family Channel. And it was a movie that came out. The story is filled with twists and turns. And in this particular story, royal surprises. The story centers on two main characters With different walks of life. One character is a lady by the name of Madison or Maddie if you in short. And another one by her, if you will, apprentice and the person that works for her, a guy by the name of Sebastian. In fact, Sebastian has a royal, uh, he has an English-British accent and he is there and he tells them that he's just trying to learn a little bit about American culture. And so he takes this job as a, as a bellhop, if you will, at a, at a, at a hotel called the Garland. And he takes this job and he begins to meet Madison who they together, their job is to, if you will, decorate and to make sure Christmas comes alive at the Garland Hotel. Madison though, she is an aspiring musician but has had stage fright ever since a a horrific experience at the age of four. At the age of four, she had the opportunity to stand on one of the grandest stages of all and sing. And when she got up there, the lights and the people terrified her and she froze in place. And she was mortified and she never wanted to sing again. So she never, she told her family about it, but they they tried to encourage her. But she took this job and, and, and has never looked back since. She jokingly, as her parents come into town, she jokingly tells her family that she is dating a prince of a small European nation who the tabloids have said is coming to New York to come and to celebrate Christmas with his family. The mother and the sisters of Madison believe this story. They believe that and they get super excited about it. But the joke goes a little too far and she has to ask her friend and co-worker Sebastian to be roped into impersonating the crown prince while visiting her family in New Jersey. Little does Madison know that Sebastian actually really is the prince all along. He had come from his, if you will, his nation uh, of Luxembourg. He had come over and he wanted to try to find his own way. He didn't want everything to be handed to him on a silver platter. So he came to America. He hid in plain sight as a bellhop in a local hotel in New York City to try to not be judged on his royalty, not to be judged on his riches, not to be judged on who he was in terms of his namesake, but for people to get to know him as a person, as a human, as someone connectable. He didn't want people to like him because he was royalty he wanted the common folks and the people of everyday life to like him because he was just a good man in the book of Matthew Matthew is one of the two gospels that record the birth of Jesus Christ in great detail Luke is interested in the story of the birth of Christ from a physician's standpoint because he is enamored by the miracle of conception and delivery as a physician Matthew however records his narrative 
as the theme of his book because throughout the entire volume of Matthew the theme that can be seen from chapter 1 till the end of the book is that Jesus Christ came as the king of kings he became king of all kings Matthew remembers Jesus calling him to be a disciple while he still worked for the IRS you know you got to be saved if you leave the IRS and don't care about money anymore that's true salvation most IRS people probably aren't saved but the reality of it is he remembered that day Jesus walked in the tax office and said stop cheating people out of their money come and follow me Matthew left a six figure salary to go be broke ain't nobody like that job he remembered that the disciples of Christ were not present at his birth because many of them would have been around the same age as Christ or some even slightly younger but the stories of Christ had been passed down from Mary and the genealogies. We read last week and the week before how Mary pondered these things in her heart. No doubt Mary began to tell people how this all came about. The text that we read today centers on the arrival of some astrologers from the East Orient region. They had been traveling for many miles and for many months based on a supernatural star that became a phenomenon in the sky they could not explain. They finally arrive at a house, not a barn, and they find a young one and a half to two year old toddler boy sitting on his mother's knee as they enter into a house. We know that it wasn't the barn because the Bible tells us they entered into a house. So Mary and Joseph at this point had left from the stable confines. We don't know how many, for certain how many magi or how many wise men came. What we do know is the assumption is at minimum three Based on the number of gifts that were brought unto the baby. The movie that you can watch to hear the rest of the love story, if you will, of Madison and Prince Sebastian. Was actually a great American movie by the name called The Crown Prince of Christmas. I was trying to figure out a title for this message all this week when my wife on Friday he said hey let's watch a movie I'm not feeling good and lo and behold when we turned it on the movie playing that particular day was the crown prince of Christmas I watched the movie halfway while Brianna was kind of in and out of consciousness I don't even really remember much I remember some of the movie but not too much because as soon as I read the title it was like illumination off the page and as you see on the media screen and the sermon graphic today you will find a manger that is filled with hay but inside of that manger you will find a crown overlaid with gold for weeks I have been enamored by our manger that has been in this auditorium for the last couple weeks I never asked sister Jennifer to put it out this way I never told her anything about it she decorated her and brother Larry decorated on their own volition but for weeks I have walked by this stage and walked to this piano and noticed a manger where a baby should be but it is overlaid with a crown of gold he may came as a baby, but he came in royalty too. He may came meek and mild, but when he comes, he's coming victorious and triumphant. He may came, the, the, you got to understand, in the story of Sebastian and, and the story of Madison, Prince Sebastian came to America because he didn't want people to see him as the prince. He didn't want people to see him as the, the heir to the throne. He came so people would get to know him for him. He came so that people wouldn't like him for what all he could give them and the, and the notoriety he brought, but he came to America so that he could be able to be found to be like on his own can I tell you Jesus put the crown at the right hand of the father and laid it down he took the royal robe off and set it on the chair and he put on carnality because he didn't want to come to earth for people like you and me who are not worthy to feel like we're unapproachable to a king we're unapproachable to royalty but he put on paupership and he put on being that of a pauper so that whether you were rich or poor whether you were, you were famous or you were not famous that any Anybody, whosoever will, let him come. He came to earth because he wanted us to realize he was an approachable God. He was Emmanuel, God with us. He was a God that will be as close as the mention of his name. He came not to show off his divinity, but he came to let us know even without his divinity, he still loved us more than anyone else. He left it all behind him to be normal. To be normal. Now you could say what is normal? No one knows. 
what my version of normal and your version of normal is, two different things. I think I am 100% normal. My wife will tell you I'm not normal. Everybody's version of normal is different. There is no cookie cutter answer. For some of you, your version of normal is boring. You can say that's normal. I say you're boring. My version of normal is let's see how much chaos we can, can control and, and create and let's see what happens. That's normal. I know he's not here today, but Brother Dennis and Brother Henry, they understand normal like me. They fit in my world. Normal is let's see what trouble we get into and hope there's not a lot of damage. It's not normal for other people. But I want to very quickly talk about this crown prince of Christmas. The first thing I want to talk to you about this year is that there is an element of searching for the king. Lauren Talley, about 10 or 15 years ago, went into the studio. She's a Southern Gospel artist that sang with her family, the Talley Trio. She went into the studio and with her family recorded a song and she got a special guest to sing on that CD, uh, Jason Crabb, to sit in that studio with her and to record a song for them. And it became, it shot up the Billboard charts and it shot up all the way at one point to being the number one song requested in Southern Gospel music. And here's what the song said. I kept on searching, searching, searching till I found him. I kept on searching, searching, searching till I found him. I kept on searching, searching, searching till I found him. I'm searching till I find the King of Kings. Can I tell you, that is what Christmas is all about. It doesn't matter what present you get. It doesn't matter what car you drive. It doesn't matter what house you have. You need to keep searching and searching and searching and searching till you're like the wise men. You come to the place where you see the star and when you search, you find the King of kings that's what Christmas is all about searching for him the wise men they were astrologers scholars of the planets well learned men they made a couple self proclaimed observations they first tell King Herod we know someone of, import someone of importance has been born we know he's a king because we've seen a star and we've come to worship him. That's some bold statement. When you're standing in the palace of another royal deity saying, No offense to you, sir, but we're not here looking for you. We have seen a star. And we know it's a king that's greater than you. And we have come to worship him. No offense. I'm telling you, you can bow down to the kings of the government. You can bow down to the kings of your job. You can bow down to the kings of your spouse. You can bow down to the kings of your children. You can bow down to the kings of a pastor. But I'm telling you, everybody. All king, kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's still something about the name of Jesus he is the king that's above every king he's above Muhammad he's above Confucius he's above every other religion Jesus Christ is king above all kings you have to make sure you're worshiping the king not a king the king you see Herod Herod demanded loyalty Jesus desired praise Jesus desired worship. God himself, wrapped in carnality, came to earth. Herod was troubled. But there are many people today that are still troubled by the gospel of Jesus Christ. The chief priests and scribes gathered together and an inquiry was formed and they began to pose the question, where is this Christ child? The response was, in Bethlehem. I read a story one time of a family who had bought a nativity set and when they got home and opened up they found they had two baby Jesuses. The mom was concerned that someone would buy a nativity set and be missing the baby Jesus. So she sent her husband and kids back to the store to tell the manager to put up a sign that read if you are missing baby Jesus please call the following number. They waited for a week. There was no call. Christmas Eve came and the father was instructed by his wife to go back to the store and just check and see if all the nativity sets were sold since no one had called. When he arrived, he found that all were missing and came home to share the news. Still no one had called. But when he returned home from the frozen Arctic air outside, he instructed his kids to get ready for bed and he would finish wrapping their mother's gifts. But he was perplexed because the mother was not home. At that moment, the phone rang. Supposing it might be someone calling about the missing Jesus, 
And the father answered the phone and frantically. But instead, on the other end of the line was his wife. And she said to him, she had to slip out. But she needed him to immediately get the kids, load them up, and come to 205 Chestnut Street. Bring blankets, cookies, and a glass, and, and, a, and a pitcher of milk. Perplexed and confused, the father bundled his kids back up, grabbed the belongings, and headed over to 205 Chestnut Street. The father was disgruntled and agitated by all of this, going back and out, in and out, in and out of this blistery cold night. Once they arrived at 205 Chestnut Street, they noticed it was the darkest house in the entire street. Immediately the front door opened and the mother and the wife of that home ran out to, the, to her kids and to her husband and said, Kids, quickly take the blankets inside, wrap up the little children freezing on the couch and give them these cookies and milk. When the father asked his wife what was the urgent nature of such a request and the odd instructions he had been given, she revealed to, this young, revealed to him that this young mom is upset and has no heat in this house because her furnace doesn't work. Her husband had walked out on her and the kids were not going to have Christmas. The mother said that the young mo- the mother said she told the young mom that her husband specialized in fixing furnaces. So the young mother came into the room and began to explain to the father that was there looking at her furnace that her husband had took everything from her but She had been managing to survive very little, but when the furnace died, she didn't have the money to fix the furnace. She said, Sir, when I was at my wit's end, and I didn't know what to do, I I remembered immediately at that moment walking by an old store in town multiple days this past week. Inside the window, there was a sign that read, If you're missing baby Jesus, please call the following number. She said, I knew by that sign that y'all must be good Christian folks and maybe willing to help someone in need. I figured that maybe y'all could help me. So I called your wife. Not because I'm missing Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. But I'm missing heat. The father was stunned. He was humbled. He called his friend on the phone for some oil. And he quickly went and picked it up and got the heat back up and running. When they left the house, there was a plate of cookies on the table. Warm milk on the table and one tiny baby Jesus laying at the center of the table with no one else on the table. The family quickly went home and gathered more blankets and clothes and oil for the furnace and toys from their house to give this family a special Christmas. No one ever called about the missing figurine, but it wasn't a packing mistake, although it wasn't a packaging mistake at all. For when Jesus shows up, he changes everything, and he does what only he can do. That's the story of Christmas. That's the story of Christmas. How did they find him? Well, isn't it just like God to give you direction? When you don't know where to go, God will point you in the right direction. What I love about stars, especially these big, beautiful stars that we replicate like Bethlehem stars, they have points at the end of them. Directionality. East, west, north, south. They're directional. They blindly left everything behind to follow a mesmerizing star. Herod heard with his ears, not with his heart, the story. Herod operated in the flesh, not in faith. But the wise men heard with their heart, not with their ears. And they walked by faith, not just by sight. They left it all. There was a sacred, secret meeting between Herod and these astrologers. Herod's plan was to dim the light while the wise men's job was to show the light. The wise men still went and searched. Even after leaving Herod, the star was still directing their path for the searching men. Can I tell you, as long as you keep searching for Jesus, he'll guide your life to where he wants it to go. You just got to follow the star. When they saw the star. The Bible said when the star, when they finally arrived, the star stood still. And when they saw it, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. They had arrived to the destination. Do you realize Garmin, Tom Tom, all of the special, you know, on star and, and all the different ones, none of them had created GPS. God was the first one to ever create GPS. Now I know GPS today is about some global positioning satellite, but God started that long before technology. 
God used the first GPS of all time. He put God's positioning star in the sky. If you keep watching for the sign. The Bible said, look up for your redemption draw up nigh. If you keep looking towards the sky, you may not know when he's coming, but I'm telling you one day he's going to split the eastern sky when no man else sees him. You will see him come down in all his glory. You've got to keep searching for the star, the star of Bethlehem, the star of heaven. If you will follow the star, Jesus will lead you right to where he is. He will direct you for the steps of a good man and one of them are ordered of the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and need not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him he'll make the pathway known if you trust in Jesus he'll make sure to keep you on track to the place of destination not only was there searching not only was there a star but there was a moment of sacred there was a moment of a sacredness to the moment to the room upon their arrival they had realized the sacred moment they had stepped into was beholding the savior of the world they could not help but to do one thing. The Bible says they immediately bowed down and worshipped the crown prince of Christmas. You see that Christmas morning, Brother Mike, there wasn't a crown laying on the manger. But whenever he comes back this next time, he won't come back with his manger. But he will come back with his crown and a scepter. He may have been wrapped in swaddling clothes. But this time he's draped in royal regalia of a robe. But on the right says king of kings. And on the left says lord of lords. And the train of his glory fills the temple. Oh he won't come back in dirty donkey clothes. He's coming back with tailor made royal regalia. That no one else could even think or comprehend. And it's beauty. King Herod was not interested. But the wise men were. The psalmist said in Psalm 16 and 11, For you will show me the path of life, and in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand pleasures forevermore. They brought sacrifices of praise, gifts for a king. The treasure of heaven was about to receive the treasures of men. What they didn't realize, though, was the darling of heaven would take their earthly treasures and exchange them for a treasure laid up in heaven. That would abide and remain and never fade and never lose its value. They were going to present him with gifts that would pass away. But he would give them a gift that would never pass away. That's quite the exchange rate if I've ever seen it. Where I can give you something that depreciates in value. But God gives you something that never depreciates in value. What an exchange. What were these gifts? The first one was gold. It revealed he was king, royalty, deity, king above all kings. The second gift was frankincense. In its purest form, it came from a tree out of Somalia. It was used in the Old Testament for oil to burn the incense. It was a sweet-smelling aroma. It was very uh, aromatic in, in, its, its fla- in its scent. It was an ingredient used in perfumes and used in the sanctuary only by the high priest to be administered. So this gift reveals that Jesus Christ became the high priest. The, me- the gold said he was God and he was king. The frankincense said he was God but he came down to be among men. So now he's the great high priest, the mediator between God and man. Nobody can go to the Father, Jesus said, except through him. He's the one that goes into the Holy of Holies. He's the one. We offer the sacrifice of praise which is the fruit of our lips. But he prays with intercessions and groanings that we can't comprehend. And he takes our petitions before the Father. The frankincense reminds us that while he was God, he came down to be the high priest, to be the bridge between heaven and earth to say you can't get there yet but I'll come down to you and I'll go back up there that where I am you may be also how will we know for he is the way the truth and the life and no man cometh unto the father but by me for in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you but I'm coming down but I'm going to prepare a place that where I am you can be also that's why the frankincense came in then they brought myrrh Myrrh was also used in temple worship for the holy anointing oil that consecrated priests, tabernacles, and kings. It was used in purification according to the book of Esther. 
But according to John 19, it was also a spice that was used in embalming. It was our version of embalming fluid. So the gold represent him as God. The frankincense represent him the bridge. Isn't it interesting that the cross, you spread your arms out wide. I've often thought about that. One, when your arms are going this way, they're, going, they're, not in, they're in directions, but they just keep going this way. If you just take a straight line, they just go. That shows you the width of God's love. It never ends. It just keeps going and going and going. But what I love about it is if you're holding, if I'm having to be a bridge for somebody while I'm holding Brother Larry's hand with one hand in order to be able to hold somebody else's hand, I've got to have my other hand. So, so Justin, come here for me real quick. Brother Randy, come here for me real quick. See, in order for this to work, in order for this to work, if I realize that God is unapproachable in my sin sickened state, but Jesus came and said, you know what, the only way I can do it is I got to grab hold to the Father, and I got to grab hold to humanity, and when I say it is finished, God will be on one side, humanity will be on the other, but when I say it is finished, I'm going to bridge the gap between God and man, the temple veil will rip from top to bottom, and I'll put God back in the hands of man, and man will reconcile them back to the heart of the Father. The only way you can experience Jesus Christ in the fullness it's to go to the cross of Calvary and realize God was away from us but Jesus came that he could reconcile us back to Jesus Christ the son of the living God thank you so much the reality of it is he's a bridge and the myrrh tells us he was human he would die he would die but his death did not end the story it was just the beginning of the story the last thing I want to bring to your attention there was a sensational period. There was a, there was a sensitive spirit in the room. After being in the presence of the king, the wise men's heart turned to a sensitivity to the voice of God. They heard the whispers of the Holy Spirit. How do you feel? Preacher? How do you say that, preacher? I didn't, I didn't see that in the scripture. Oh, they heard a clear message from God. They were sensitive to recognizing his voice. They had followed the leading of a star to his presence. But once they were in his presence, they didn't follow the star. They followed his voice. Notice what it said. They followed a star. But once they saw him and were in his presence, verse 12, they were divinely warned in a dream, not the star. I remember there was a guy by the name of Joseph, Brother Larry. When he was uncertain about what to do with a virgin, a spouse to be his wife, that told him she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, he was confused as to what to do. But in his, sense, in his state of restlessness and tossing and turning, in the middle of the night, God sent an angel in the form of a dream and said, Hey, Joseph, this thing that Mary carries is of God. It is not of man. This is all God, and it's okay. Can I tell you, when you've been in the presence of the king, you'll be sensitive to the voice of God. They started out following a star, but they left following his voice. They left the sheep know my voice if any man hears my voice let him come unto me and sup with me for I am where he is they heard the voice of God tell them to go a different way you see spending time with the crown prince of heaven changes everything being sensitive to the voice of God is only done by being in his presence the old song says you won't leave here like you came in Jesus name everything changes I began to think as Carol, as you make your way. The wise men were willing to risk it all to follow the phenomenon in the sky. With no assurance as to what they'd find. Even though it was quite risky, they did it. Their lives, though, were never the same after this journey. When they met Jesus, when we met Jesus, at first it might have seemed like a risk. But oh, it's been so well worth the journey once I found him. It was certainly worth it all. Once we've come into his presence, we've never been the same again. In Luke chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible says that Mary brought forth her firstborn son. Not Joseph's, not yours and mine. She brought hers. It wasn't our firstborn son. It didn't belong to Joseph. Just because Jesus wasn't our firstborn son, what we do have is we, get to not call, we don't get to call him our firstborn. We get to call him our Savior. We get to call him our Lord. We get to call him our Master, our Redeemer, our King. Though the surroundings of his birth are extraordinary and, the, and definitely seems unfathomable, the baby 
that once laid in the manger actually really is still the crown prince of Christmas. I'm going to ask Brother Storm and them in the back if they would kill all the lights for me, please. Brother Randy, if you'll get this side for me and take them, and Brother Larry, if you'll take these down, there'll be enough. I'm going to ask you to turn. You should just be able to screw the top on the top of your candles. They are battery powered. You should just be able to turn them. Turn them on for me momentarily. I'm going to ask Brother Storm and Brother Randy if they would come. And while I begin to read, if they will pass out the sacred elements that are before me today to the presence of this people. Ms. Carol, you can continue to play if you don't mind. The story of Christmas is such a beautiful story. You guys go ahead and pass it out. Christmas is a time of celebration. It's a time of joy. It's a time of consecration. Ultimately, Christmas lives in our heart, not just in December. But the magic, the wonder, the awe of Christmas lives on forevermore. That's what Christmas is all about. Christmas never was about me. It was about him as the baby. And the soon coming king. As we get ready here momentarily to... Take the sacred elements and we commemorate. I know most people say, well, Pastor, we do this around Easter. And we do this to commemorate the Lord's Supper and the death and burial of, of Christ. So why would we do this at Christmas time? Because if he didn't come as a baby, we wouldn't have a death to celebrate and a resurrection to rejoice with. He still had to come. I'm going to read some scripture to you tonight or today. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of the bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let each man examine himself so that he eats the bread and before he eats the bread and drinks of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sick among you, and many do sleep. For if we should judge, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned. Wherefore, brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry for one another. And if any man be hunger, let him eat at home, that he not come together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Before we take the sacred elements of this Holy Communion. I'm going to ask you to just, for a moment, bow your head, take about 30 seconds, and evaluate your heart with God. I don't want anybody in this room who doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to take this unworthily. The reality of this is this, Jesus is still the reason for the season. If you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I know Jesus, let me just help you understand it. Very simple. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Will you come into my heart and forgive me of my sins and be Lord of my life? I believe you are Jesus and you are the Son of God. If you say that today, you can be saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that every man, woman, boy, and girl in the sound of my voice takes a moment of reflection in this sacred hour. And they remember why you came. The purpose of you coming. The very nature of why we're in this sacred moment right now. Father, I pray that you would let every man, woman, boy, or girl on the sound of my voice experience the full miracle of Christmas, the full pardoning of sins. And if there's anyone today, God, that is in this house, and they drink of this cup, 